Federalist Paper 15, Part 3. This is the melancholy situation to which we have been brought by those very maxims and counsels which would now deter us from adopting the proposed Constitution, and which, not content with having conducted us to the brink of a precipice, seem resolved to plunge us into the abyss, to the abyss that awaits us below. So we don't accept this new constitution. It is like we are standing by edge of a cliff. We're all doomed. We're all going to fall all the way to the bottom. Here, my countrymen, impelled by every motive that ought to influence an enlightened people, let us make a firm stand for our safety, our tranquility, our dignity, our reputation. Let us at last break the fatal charm which has too long seduced us from the paths of felicity and prosperity. It is true, as has been before observed, that facts too stubborn to be resisted have produced a species of general assent to the abstract proposition that there exist material defects in our national system. But the usefulness of the concession on the part of the old adversaries of federal measures is destroyed by a strenuous opposition to a remedy upon the only principles that can give it a chance of success. While they admit that the government of the United States is destitute of energy, they contend against conferring upon it those powers which are requisite to supply that energy. They seem still to aim at things repugnant and irreconcilable, at an augmentation of federal authority without a diminution of state authority, at sovereignty in the Union and complete independence in the members. They still, in fine, seem to cherish with blind devotion the political monster of an imperium and imperial. This renders a full display of the principal defects of, conf of the Confederation necessary in order to show that the evils we experience do not proceed from minute or partial imperfections, but from fundamental errors in the structure of the building, which cannot be amended otherwise than by an alteration in the first principles and main pillars of the fabric. The great and radical vice in the construction of the existing confederation is the principle of legislation for states or governments in their corporate or collective capacities and as contradistinguished from the individuals of whom they consist. Okay, let me finish this short paragraph and then I will come back and focus on this important first part that he brings up. Though this principle does not run through all the powers delegated to the Union, yet it pervades and governs those on which the efficacy of the rest depends. Except as to the rule of apportionment, the United States have an indefinite discretion to make requisitions for men and money, 
but they have no authority to raise either by regulations extending to the individual citizens of America. The consequence of this is that, though in theory their resolutions concerning those objects are laws constitutionally binding on the members of the Union, yet in practice they are mere recommendations which the, the states observe or disregard at their option. Okay. Now, since this is very important, I'm going to repeat this paragraph. Notice it says, The great and radical vice in the construction of the existing confederation. The great and radical vice that this confederacy has that we live under, the first constitution of the United States, is the principle of legislation for states or governments in their corporate or collective capacities and as country distinguished from the individuals of whom they, cons they consist. In other words, in the confederation that we have now, if you pass a law, if the confederation passes a law, it will not apply to the citizens of different states. You have to ask the state, that's why he says, in their collective or corporate capacity. You have to ask the state to execute the law for you. You cannot do it yourself. He says, this is a great mistake. If a government passes a law, it has to be applicable to the people that live in, live in these states. Otherwise, it's not a law. When he uses the word resolution, he's talking about the resolutions or laws that a Congress or a government passes. So he says, if in this confederacy, if somebody in Georgia or South Carolina breaks law, the confederate government cannot come and hold that person accountable. They have to go to the state and ask the state to hold that person accountable. He says, this is not a government that will work in the long run. Because of that, in this new constitution, we have tried to make it in a way that if the federal government passes a law, it will be applicable to the citizens of the states also. And they don't have to go ask the state to punish that person or to bring that person to justice. So keep that in mind. Anytime he uses the word corporate or collective capacity, he's talking about state as a whole rather than the citizens of the state. That's why he brings the word individual. He says our laws have to be applicable to the individuals. This was so important that I wanted to spend this time with you on it. Okay, the next short paragraph, it is a singular instance of the capriciousness of the human mind that after all the admonitions we have had from experience on this head, there should still be found men who, ob who object to the new constitution for deviating from a principle which has been found the bane of the old and which is in itself evidently incompatible with the idea of government. A principle, in short, which, if it is to be executed at all, must substitute the violent and sanguinary agency of the sword to the mild influence of the magistracy. In other words, if we keep on doing the stupid thing of having to go to the government of the states to hold people accountable, this will eventually lead to what he calls sanguinary agency of the sort. In other words, this will eventually lead to violence and we have to bring people or the state to 
accept the law by war and desolation and destruction rather than like civilized groups of human beings going to a court magistracy of the law or allowing law to be the last word. So this is very important. Just reread this for yourself. It is very important. I'll read this paragraph again. It is a singular instance of the capriciousness of the human mind that after all the admonitions we have had from experience on this head, there should still be found men who, up, who object to the new constitution for deviating from a principle which has been found the bane of the old and which is in itself evidently incompatible with the idea of government. A principle, in short, which, if it is to be executed at all, must substitute the violent and sanguinary agency of the sword to the mild influence of the magistracy. 